So, it's good to be back. So last week, um, we began part one. If you remember, I shared the story of me reading through um, Romans 5.17. For if by the... Oh, good morning. I'm Mark. If you don't know me, know me great to be here. Welcome to Coffee Impact Church again. Uh, Romans 5.17. For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through the one man, that was Adam, then how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness, righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. And I shared last week how I remember reading this a number of years ago and thinking to myself, reign in life, I'm not reigning in life. Things are going quite bad, if I'm being honest. We were stuck financially going backwards. Life was hard as parents of young kids. And I prayed the Spirit. I said, God, show me what it means to reign in life. Because reigning means you're in a position where you're above circumstances. Reigning means you speak with authority and things happen. Reigning means you're not short and stuck. And I really felt like I was. So last week, we talked about this Bible verse, which is a powerful Bible verse. And Paul makes the case before and afterwards. There's so much there. There's so much richness there. I'd encourage you to look it up and try and discover what it means. And, and last week, I felt like I shared that I felt like God showed me that this is somewhat of a recipe. And the two ingredients of this recipe that lead to reigning in life are number one, and I've even underlined them, God's abundant provision of grace. Those who receive God's abundance, so that's me, lots of it, provision of grace. And number two, the gift of righteousness. So with those two ingredients lead, according to this Bible verse, to reigning in life through the one Jesus Christ. So last week we talked about grace, God's unmerited favor. We can't earn it. It's a gift. And we looked at just briefly at Galatians and how in the Galatians church there was this, hey, you need to jump through these hoops for them particularly. It was an uncomfortable surgical procedure for the men. Jump through these hoops to get closer. I know I was so tempted to say the jokes again, but I was like, no, Mark, that's juvenile. Don't do that. So I didn't. So I'm not going to talk about that and what a rip off that is. But they were being ripped. I did it. I couldn't help myself. I did it. So the Galatian church were like, if you want to get close to God, thank you, Lawrence. If you want, <laughs> he just said another one. If you want to get close to God, you've got to do these things. But that's not grace. And Paul actually said that cancels out the gift of grace when we try and run, jump through hoops. So the second thing, according to, so that's grace. The second thing, according to Romans 5, 7, is another gift. And that's Righteousness. So we're going to talk about that today. Now, for me, this was a life-transforming message. It's massive. So we're going to squeeze it in. But before we do, they say you shouldn't ever look at the comments online when you're, you know, social media. Don't look at your own comments. But I did this week. I had a look at some of the comments from uh, on the Company Impact Church YouTube page. And uh, some of the comments from last week were, uh, where is it? Not as good as the sound of music. So uh, that was a bit harsh. Bit of a sound of music reference. Uh, another comment. Uh, bring back the other guy who always talks about love. Oh, what? He mighty fine. And that was from a P. Kirby. That user there. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, there's no comments. It was only posted yesterday. But Lawrence, we pray, even though I joke, we pray God's continued awesome healing on your arm that it would be fully restored because we love and honor how much you've sown into this community. And I also feel like God wants to say, you have sown faithfully for so long, and he's bringing a harvest. You're not going to sow all your life and not see it, not just in this church, but also in your family, in relationships, and in your life. And I feel like as a community, we really want to honor Lawrence and Philippa, and for how much they've sown into our lives and this region. So, God, we speak your blessing over them and your blessing over their family in Jesus' name. Awesome. So, Reigning in Life, part one is up online. Have a look at it, Company Impact Church. Um, if, you, if, if you want to get the full picture, there's two ingredients. So, part two, righteousness. Now, for me, this is massive. For some of you, you might think, what the? Ugh. And I encourage you, if you do think that, go to the Bible and check it out because this is massive. Here we go. Righteousness. So if someone does something that is righteous, we're going to go right back to the beginning. Um, you'd say they'd done something that was morally right 
or good. I looked up the dictionary definition of unrighteousness and it actually said not righteous. So I'm like, uh, who's writing these things? That's like a circuit. You can't do that. Anyway, so righteous, if you donated to the Red Cross this week, if you chose to be patient in the face of extreme provocation from your kids during the school holidays, then that's righteous. Can I hear it? Probably all those parents didn't even make it today. Unrighteous. Maybe you got up this morning <coughs> feeling a little grumpy, yelled at the kids, you kicked the cat, you ran over a baby seal on the way to church. Those kind of things you would say are unrighteous. So righteousness then is the measure of that. It's real simple. It's measured according to a standard or a plumb line. And that's the next slide, David. Righteousness is the measure of that, how righteous you are. So biblically, we know there's a whole lot of things that God said, the do's and don'ts that affect our righteousness. So Deuteronomy 27, don't take a bride. Leviticus 11, a bribe, a bribe, not a bride. Brides are fine uh, within certain limitations. Uh, I've got to stop talking about that. All right, anyway, uh, don't eat pork. Don't kill, steal, or lie. Don't work on Sundays. Don't misdirect a blind person. I actually didn't know that was in the Bible, but it's there. Don't misdirect a blind person. And that's good. That's good. In case anyone was thinking I'm going to tell the blind person the other way anyway. So that's there. So biblically, there's a whole lot of lists. And then God made it abundantly clear to the Israelites, do good and you'll get good. Do bad and you'll get bad. And that's summing up much of the entire Old Testament of the Bible. And that do good, get good, do bad, get bad is sometimes called, particularly in the New Testament, the curse of the law, because it certainly is. And here lies the problem. None of us, not even one of us, has ever reached God's standard of righteousness, which is perfection. And we can show that on a graph. If you bring up the graphs, David, because I, I made a graph of this. So if God's at the top, let's call his level of righteousness 1 million. I had it 100, but I thought, no, no, he's way more. Zero, zero sense of righteousness. Where would you put yourself? Well, I think according to what Paul said, even our, our best efforts are sometimes selfish. So our self would be way down low. A whole long way from God's perfect standard of righteousness. If we measure ourselves, most of us would consider ourselves very unrighteous, far, far away from God's perfect standard. But there's some amazing news. There's some amazing news. Jesus Christ lived a perfect life and willingly, willingly endured the cross. He was the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. He died so our sins could be forgiven. And according to Romans 5.17 that we looked at before, it wasn't just reversing the curse of Adam, but it was so much more. So at the cross, there was what some scholars call the great exchange. We receive life in exchange for his death. We receive beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, hope for despair. By his wounds, we're healed. He was made poor so we could live in abundance. He was broken so we could be made whole. He was bound so we could be free. And this is really important. Our sinful state was exchanged for his righteous state and this is the big one so a whole lot exchanged at the cross but we were in a sinful state now now i don't know if you know this or not but in the new testament very rarely only a handful of times is sin referred to as the verb i kicked the cat it's the sinful state most of the time except for a few times righteousness is a state we were in a state of sin we've moved to a state of righteousness and this is really, 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 really big. He exchanged our sinful state for Jesus' righteous state. And David, could you bring up the next graph for that? So this is it. Through the cross, there's God, and then there's us through Jesus. Now check this out, because this is, this is where the rubber hits the road if you really think about it. And this is what I want you to do this morning, because this really matters. Righteousness is not a temporary in or out scenario. Your entire state of being has changed. You didn't get in by your actions, but by faith. And neither will you be disqualified by your actions. You have been made righteous. And that's really big. And some of you might need to think about that later to think, is this actually the truth? 
and look it up. You didn't get in by your actions, but by faith, and neither can you be disqualified by your actions because you have been made righteous. It actually doesn't matter if you got up this morning, kicked the cat, accepted a bribe, and ate a bacon sandwich for breakfast, which was probably delicious. You have been made righteous. Now, our minds say, but this doesn't make sense. Does that mean that sin doesn't matter anymore? And no, that's not the truth. Galatians 5, if you sow in sin, you'll reap a harvest of weeds. So that's a thing. That doesn't go away. But, and this is the big bit, our transgressions are not more powerful than the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross that changed our state from a sinful state to a righteous state. Now, that's a, that's a massive thing. That's a massive thing for some of us to, to take in. Because of Christ through faith, we've been made 100% right with God. We've been permanently removed from this do good, get good, do bad, get bad covenant and relationship with God. And according to God's standard in Christ, we are 100% righteous. Check this out, as righteous as God himself. Now, you might be thinking, <laughs> you've gone too far there, Mark. No, hold on, hold on. Only Jesus is as righteous as God himself. But I would say don't sell yourself short because it's not your righteousness. It's his righteousness. And that is massive. It's his righteousness. Has God lowered his standards? God hasn't lowered his standards. We have been made new creations. Now, this is a massive, massive thing. And we'll talk about why in just a minute. But before we do, I want to pray you a little, play you a little clip. Um, and one especially, this is from Phil Vischer, who made VeggieTales, especially dedicated to uh, the, the members of Activate who go to the Breakfast Club. And almost every Thursday, I drive them to school, and they want to sing, Where Is My Hairbrush? very loudly in my car, and they ruin my street cred around Pram. Anyway, so this is for them who've ruined my street cred. Uh, Peace, where are you? She's one of them. Thank you, Peace. At the back, I can't even... Yep, that's one. Thank you. Anyway, so this is Phil Vischer. And um, so this is a real short clip. He's talking about this. And then um, just for anyone who's going, i got to see it in the Word. I'm going to get an expert to come up, and we're going to delve into the Word. Oh, the expert's Andrea. <laughs> um, <coughs> one of her Bible study nights, they talk about righteousness. And she goes into it real deep, and it is so life-giving. So we're going to talk about the Word and what that means. But... Let's check out this clip. It's just a quick one. This whole justified by grace through faith was really important to Paul because as we mentioned in the last show, in some of the churches, Jewish Christians were telling Gentile Christians that they had to follow all the Jewish laws before they were really righteous. But Paul says, no, those laws can't make you righteous because no one can follow them. The only thing that can make us righteous is what Jesus did on the cross. So doing what's right can't make me righteous. Only what Jesus did on the cross can. Hmm. If that's true, then why should I even try to do what's right? Wait, what? No, really. Why not just do whatever I want? Good question. We can't reach God by trying to do what's right. But God's love through Jesus changes us to want to do what's right. Powerful stuff. If you can't hear it from me, maybe you just need to hear it from a puppet this morning. So God's love through Jesus changes us. We can't be made right by what we do, but something's happened in the cross. So let's go to the Word and see if this is see where this stands up. So Andrea, welcome. We're asking for like, what do you see? So we've got a couple of verses. David, could you bring up the next couple of verses? So these are these are a couple of key righteousness verse, so verses. Second Corinthians five twenty one. He God made him who knew no sin. Jesus. So God made Jesus, who knew so, no sin, to be sin on our behalf, so we might become the righteousness of God in Him. So when you teach this in Bible study, Andrew, what are the things that you think stand out in this? What are the things that we need to know about righteousness? <clears throat> I'm trying to make it brief. So this one is really, really important because it's not just that when we believe what Jesus did for us, we ask Him to forgive us our sins. And we're forgiven, and then we walk into life from there on out, being trying to be righteous and making keeping short accounts and trying to make sure that we maintain our forgiveness state. But this actually says to us that God made Jesus, who knew no sin, 
He was holy, righteous. He was God. He made him sin, and that's that noun, the sin state, on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God, which is that standard Mark talked about, the 100% in Jesus. So he actually changed our identity. And Mark talked about this before, but to actually see that and, and really believe it and receive it is huge because it is our identity. It's who we are. You are no longer a sinner when you believe what Jesus did for you. You become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're actually a new person. Your identity is not, I'm a sinner. So what happens, what starts to happen, it's happened in your spirit, but what starts to happen in your mind when you believe it is you start manifesting your righteousness. You believe it, I'm righteous. You start to be righteous. But it's a, that's the process. But reality is you're a righteous person. But for so many of us, we want to identify with that sinful self. It feels more natural. It feels like who we are. But we need to, to look at this next verse, which is Romans 10, 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So that says it right there. Jesus ended that measuring situation for us. He fulfilled the law completely, 100% on your behalf. He lived the sinless life for you because you can't do it. He ended the law for righteousness. You following the rules cannot buy you righteousness with God anymore. Jesus has paid for it 100%. You get in by believing. And then you receive that and your identity changes. And that's the process of renewing your mind. And that was big for me. I remember reading this and going, this verse is that we might become, that's our identity. And as Andrew just said, we don't identify anymore as, hey, before God, I'm a sinner. It's we might become, God wants us to know that we are righteous. He wants us to own that. Not own that, well, I'm rubbish. Own that we are are righteous. And this this is where it really matters cuz cuz this is important, right? So we've left if we're righteous, we've left this measuring up scenario with God. So when you have that feeling of I'm just not good enough. What does righteousness say? <laughs> that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that is the renewing your mind and I um I've worked this in, into my own life over time, and I'm not there yet, obviously, but it's that process and telling yourself that process of renewing your mind, changing your mind, is believing I'm righteous. So if there's a thing, and I know we all have our thing, which is our pet sin or our, our brokenness, the thing we go to often the thing that we're sitting in bed at night and we're like, oh God, I'm sorry, I did it again. I'm terrible. You must think I'm so terrible. And our shame comes in there and condemnation and guilt is there's that thing and there may be more than one for you, but it's that thing. If you can say to yourself when you're in that moment after you've done that thing or thought that thing, if you can say to yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus right in the face of having acted in a sinful way, starts to change that process. What does a mind do when you're shameful and you've done something naughty and bad and Jesus says to you, you're my righteousness. You're righteous. You can't compute that, right? And you go, eh, but when it and you start to resist it. If your spirit can choose to go, I side with Jesus. I am righteous. That part of you that wants to believe you're a sinner, that wants to go play in the dirt, starts to go, wait a minute. Maybe I'm righteous. Maybe Jesus is more powerful than this thing that I want to do. Maybe, that, maybe. And then the next time you do it, you say to yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
and it starts that process of change, there will be a day when you go, hmm, I want to do that thing, but I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I actually don't need to do that thing. And you're not just trying, and this is important, you're not just trying to convince yourself of something, you're actually aligning your life with the truth, and there's power in that. There's power in that, in going, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that's why this message is incredibly powerful and incredibly life-changing. So, so what about when I have this thought in my head that goes, well, I don't know, I haven't read the Bible, prayed, been to church for a month, I haven't, yada, 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 yada. So, so these are sometimes condemning thoughts we have about ourselves. What does righteousness say then? It's the same thing. You are righteous. You've been made right by my son, Jesus. You're in. That's who you are. That's who you are. Yeah. You're in. You've been removed from the prison of sin, and you've been placed in the prison of righteousness. You can't get out. I put you there. I've made you that way. That's who you are. I love you so much. I want you to live an abundant and full life. I've provided for your righteousness. Wow. Your state of being has changed. Yeah, that's and it's, <laughs> Jesus will tell you that by his Holy Spirit all day long if you'll listen. Yeah. His, his job is to remind you of Jesus and what he's done for you and who you are in him. And that's the process. And I feel I've, through years, the years, I've done some counseling with people and it's always the same thing. It's that shame and guilt and I'm not good enough and I don't measure up because la, 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 and we can make our list. But often what's needed is just that injection of truth which says that's not who you are. I've made you righteous. And the enemy doesn't want you to know that. So he's going to come at you all day long like, well, blah, 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 well, look at you. How can you be righteous when you do this? I've seen your mind. I know what you think. That's him lying to you. Don't let him rob you. Put on the new self, the true self, which actually means sink into your true self. Begin to rest in who you really are. Begin to listen to what Jesus says about you and receive it in your spirit. It will change the way you act. But God is not looking at the way you act. He's looking at what's happening on the inside. And that is the righteousness that comes from Jesus, which is your identity. And that's what God wants us to live out of, right? So I know for me this week, one day driving in the car and had all these thoughts of, oh, remember that day, Mark, when you were a fool? Or remember that thing you did when you were an idiot? And so I had to make the choice to go, yeah, I do remember I've done stupid things in my life and I'll probably do them again, but that's not who I am. I'm not going to define myself by my worst days because who am I? I'm a child of God. I am loved unconditionally by God. And in God's eyes, I am righteous. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. So this is who I am. So then Jesus comes along and says, hey, don't worry about what you're going to eat or drink. Seek first my kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will come together. Sermon on the Mount. So seek first, keep your eyes on Jesus, but it doesn't say live a moral life. And that's really interesting. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because when we understand the righteousness of Jesus, it doesn't dis we don't allow ourselves to disqualify ourselves from God's goodness by thinking, I'm not good enough for that. It's irrelevant. We're righteous in him. The prayers of a righteous man or woman are powerful and effective. Well, actually, that's us. That's us because we're righteous. There's so many promises that we now qualify for. And this is where reigning in life comes in because we don't get to discount ourselves anymore by saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not spiritual enough. I'm not Christian enough because we've been made righteous. And for those of us who keep getting back to, but my behavior, but my behavior, when you believe right things about yourself, you'll reflect it. Our believing changes our behavior. Our believing changes our behavior. And we have been made right before God. Even if you're stuck on the same old thing, know who we are. We've been made righteous. And that is massive. It's a gift like grace. And when we learn to, to rest in that, 
will receive the incredible things God has for us. And that's how we begin to reign in life. Will you help us pray? Cool. I want to pray just to finish off this morning, because this, this is a massive thing. And, and write these references down and ask God to reveal them. And if there's a part of your mind where you just measure yourself up, or maybe it's something you've had for a long time, that sense of, oh, I'm not good enough. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Challenge that lie with this truth of what Jesus has done in you, because it will transform your life, change your ability to receive from God, and therefore reign in life. This is an incredible thing. This is an incredible thing. When Jesus prayed all those things, those times and said, everything I have is yours, ask whatever, instantly our first response is to go back to the old way and go, but I'm, I don't qualify, I'm not good enough. But Jesus has made us as righteous as God himself because it's his righteousness. So this is massive. So when we become a Christian, a part of that process of following Jesus is surrender. But sometimes we need to surrender our thoughts and say, God, and I wonder if this is some of us today, I surrender those thoughts about myself because they're not true. And I pray that you teach me the truth about myself, that I can have that. I pray, teach me your truth, that I could think about myself the way you think about myself. And for some of us, we maybe even need to say, God, Forgive me for judging myself. I don't want to do that anymore. Because when we begin to see ourselves as God sees us, righteous, 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 we've been made right before God, it changes who we are. Can we finish this morning by standing? I'd love to pray a blessing over our lives before we stop for coffee. So if you're able, stand up. And um, do you want to pray first, Andrea? Then I'll finish up. I just had one last thought that it's really easy if you scan your own mind for you to believe that you're a sinner because of what Adam did. That feels easy. That's, we identify with that, right? Why is it not as easy or more easy to believe that we identify as righteous because of the powerful act that Jesus did? Let go of that sinful identity let go of identifying with Adam because what he did is minimal compared to what Jesus Christ did that is powerful in your life identify with the righteous identity that Jesus has given you switch and you may even need to just move your step in your seat I'm moving out of this I'm moving into this because this is who Jesus says I am Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for that powerful, righteous act on my behalf. And Lord, I just want to speak to every part of us that, that is living in and believing about our sinful nature. That identifies I'm a sinner. I always get it wrong. Look at me, I'm so shameful. Why will I never get it together? This is happening to me because I am sinful. Lord, I speak to that part and I just speak your life and your truth. Lord, set us free from that sinful thought that goes around and around and around and around, identifying with Adam. Lord, set us free to be able to live entirely in your righteousness. Lord, that we could say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Enemy, you've got no right to tell me any other way. That is who I am. So I release that ability, that faith to believe in our righteousness through Jesus. That it would impact, Lord, that things would break even today. Lord, that sinful things that have held us back because we believe they're part of who we are. We break their power now in Jesus' name and we transfer our allegiance to you, Jesus. We believe in you, Jesus. We believe that we are righteous through faith in you and that is a gift 
And there is nothing we can do to, to accept it except just believe it. And there's nothing we can do that will remove us from that righteous state. In Jesus' name, I pray power. Power in our lives that we would have authority over sin. In Jesus' name. I feel like Holy Spirit's just, just working, revealing and removing some of those lies. Bringing freedom and replacing with the truth. God, in your presence today, our heart says we want to believe about us what you believe about us. Help us to believe the truth. Even though we may not feel right now that we deserve that, receive your truth. And you love us so much that you died for us. If you declare us righteous right before God, who are we to declare anything else over our lives? Mm. You declare we measure up. Then who are we to declare anything else and think thoughts otherwise? So God, we just speak that those lies we sometimes carry around and may have carried around for a long time that it's time for them to go. Just to be laid down at the foot of the cross and mm. just left there, walked away as free men and women. God, thank you for the freedom in you. Thank you for the truth that's in you. And thank you, God, that your heart is that we would be set free. Not stuck with the same responses we've had for, for five or ten years, a decade, maybe as long back as we can remember. But we can begin to believe the truth that we are children of the Most High God. We are loved by God. We are yours. And we are right before you. You're our God and our, our supplier. You provide everything we need and more. You answer our prayers. God, thank you for who you are. We receive your truth and we walk in your truth in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to encourage everyone. <clears throat> I know this is weird to use your voice. <laughs> but I, I want to encourage us all to say together, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and just declare it. So I'll, I'll say it, and you say it after me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And again, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I mean...